here in the southwest having to go for a rest today using my bait casting setup. Uh, it's a standard bait casting reel, not an expensive one, it's Cast King Spartacus. Magnetic brakes, Centripuga brakes as well. Used it a bit the last couple of years. Uh, I've got a, a Dam Yagi rod rated from 15 to 53 grams. It's a soft rod, so it's lower rating than that, and it does for my ras fishing. Not too optimistic today, it's a bit windy, a bit of colour in the water. I'm using the old uh, Texas rig. Uh, Texas rig crawl bait with 20 pound casking super power braid and Berkeley Trilene 100% fluorocarbon in 15 pounds tied together with a FG knot. Let's see how it goes. So I'm just skinning the hook point there on my Texas rig. case of uh, twitch twitch balls. Well, a little chat about bait casters. Uh, this is a casking spot of this plus. Uh, it's a dual braking mechanism reel. It has on the outside a dial which gives you your centrifugal brakes. Uh, we can depress this little lever and twist. I'll drop it in the drink and you can see we have centrifugal brakes. Now when you start fishing with these, make sure you set the brakes high. Uh, your centrifugal brakes control the cast at the beginning of the cast when you first put the speed into it off the end of your rod tip. And your magnetic brakes control the cast at the end of the cast. <coughs> you also have another braking system which is your spool tension knob. Uh, the more you loosen it off, the more the spool will rock from side to side, the less the washer or whatever is inside there pushes on the spindle of the reel. So you imagine the more you tighten it up, the slower the reel is going to run. I tend to use it to control the fall of my lure. As you can see, I've got it going quite fast. You can slow it up if you want, but all these things, adding them up, will reduce your distance. You have another break, and that's your thumb. As you cast out, I would advise you to stop the lure before it hits the water. That straightens everything off and that helps with birds nests. So as you become more and more experienced with these reels, you'll learn how to adjust them on the day because the conditions affected on the day. If the wind's coming right in my face, I'm gonna to need to um, definitely turn my centrifugal brakes up and my, my magnetic brakes up. The spool tension could probably stay the same. And I'm gonna thumb it a lot more. Because side wind, similar effect just adjust them on the day and also adjust them for the size of the lure. If you're fishing a bigger, heavier weight, you might need to control it a little bit more. Funny enough, smaller lures are harder to cast and control. The other thing you have on your bait caster is a drag. You can loosen it, tighten it. I'm fishing for a ass here today, so I want it pretty tight. Bringing it towards me, we'll, as you can see, we'll loosen it right up. I'm gonna fish it near the max today. They'll have to really pull, the, pull that drag. I can always adjust it during the fight. All right, let's give it a go. We're just twitching the rod tip. Bouncing the lure along the bottom. Hopefully we'll get a tap, which is the ras stunning the bait, followed by the rod tip pulling round shortly afterwards, and a fish. When you first cast out, leave it a settle. So it might have landed right in front of her ass. But after a short pause, do your twitch, twitch, twitch. Pause again. The pauses are important. The colder the water, the longer the pause you want. You can catch her ass all year round. It's water clarity you're mainly interested in. I wouldn't use a very expensive boat caster in the sea. Um, the salt water really can take its toll. I tend to spray this reel off when I get home. The world as well. But it's a 25 quid reel, so, you know, I'm not throwing things on 300 pound reels here and 
I wouldn't dream of it, the, the salt water will just corrode them. Oh yeah, that was a good pull. Come on, have it. Just one thump today. And again, go on, have it, have it. Round you go again. Well, you can see that on the rod tip, but that was two good pulls, but still not a big fish. It isn't picking it up. Those pulls are so sharp, by the time you struck it, it's gone, got it. Yeah, we got one. Not a big one, but we got one. Hand line this one in on these little net. Hang it over the water so if it falls in, it's in the water. And take the hook out. Struggling a bit there. There we have it. One little ballon rass, and then he goes. Yay! On a pink Senko. Gary Yamamoto sent that, three inch. With a small, probably, that's about a 10 gram exit. Yes, that will last. Only a little one. We got one. Oh, cool. There we go. Well, a little bit on fish gear here. You can see I've got the fish in the net still, and I put it down a little bit of a rock, pull on some weed there. I used barbless hooks, so it should be easy to come out. The fish is not going to come to any harm there, it's still breathing in that water. If you can't put it in water, put it on weed and get the hook out nice and quick. Always uh, make sure you remove and get the, the hook and get the fish back as soon as possible. So that's exactly what we're going to do now. Usually best to grab the end of your line, grab the front of the fish. Yeah, cock that up. Take that hook out, put it back in the net, and then we'll let it go. Yeah. 